Today's episode is going to detail a few different red flags that narcissists and toxic people exhibit early on in the relationship. Stay tuned, like, and subscribe. Thank you. So we had a rough first date, but here's the second date. Um, do you have any kids? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got I got a bunch of kids, but they don't like me. They they don't like you? The, the kids or the, the other parent? Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, so where do you work at now? I got plenty of jobs, but right now I'm a, I'm a rapper. Uh, a rapper? Um, do you have any, a, a mixtape that I can listen to? Are you any good? Mixtape? What, what are you talking about? I'm a seasonal rapper at Target right now. And yes, I'm very good. A, a se what? A seasonal rapper? Like, what do you do in the off season? Well, in the off season, I'm an entrepreneur. I, I, I do a little bit of everything. I, I dabble. I dabble. You dabble, huh? Like, so do you make any money doing this this entrepreneurial stuff? The money is not important. It's, it's chasing the dream. Ch chasing the dream, huh? Will you marry me? Yes. Welcome back, y'all. Sorry, I turned the camera. My cur the curtain right there is broken, y'all. My daughter just nibbled away at it. So, red flags, red flags, red flags. I know. So, I break up a lot of my skits with with levity. I I like to add some comedy to my skits or whatever to convey a point in a funny way. You can't sit here and just say, "Hey, Lee, have me just like everybody else," because I'm absolutely one hundred percent not. There's only one Lee Hammock, and you're looking at him. <laughs> but yeah, so you see, red flags are there, y'all. The red flags are there. They're not always as obvious, but if you listen to people talk, don't be... I know sometimes you might be enamored with people. Somebody that is love bombing the steam off of you, clapping the steam off your cheeks or whatever. You might be enamored with that person, in love with that person, or just seeing that. Like, you know, you've never been treated this way. Uh, everything is different and things like that, you know? Um... This is different. I've never felt this way about anybody else. Of course, I've heard all. Look, y'all. When I tell you I heard it all, I've heard it all. Trust me. But if you slow down and listen to the words that are coming out of somebody's mouth, they will tell you, especially a narcissist or a toxic person, they're going to tell you exactly what they're going to do to you if you listen to them. Stop letting things that you shouldn't like. Stop letting things just kind of skirt by, just kind of meander by. Because if you are letting things slide early in a relationship that you normally wouldn't put up, if you're dropping your boundaries early in a relationship, you're going to get taken advantage of. Point blank period, end of story, ba 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 ba. Beep boop boop beep beep ba 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 beep beep. You know how it goes. You're going to get taken advantage of. If somebody tells you they're, that they are still in a relationship or still married or whatever, and you're still going, but they, they, they're separated but still living in the same house, chances are they are lying their ass off to you. But y'all be so enamored. Simple fix to that. Hey, I'm still uh, I'm still married, by the way, but we, we live together, but we, we sleep in separate beds. I sleep downstairs. They sleep upstairs. And, you know, we just together for the kids or whatever, for finances. I'm, I'm free to do what I want to do. They're going to do what they want to do. Oh, OK. That's kind of weird. I'm not normally hip to that. Well, can I do you mind if I reach out to your soon to be ex and ask them, is it OK if we uh, if we date, if we talk or do whatever? Oh, no, 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 no. It's too early on in that. They don't need to know. I don't like them to know my business. Kind of keep it private. It, it, it'll, it'll make it harder for me in a divorce, you know? It'll really, really make it harder on me because they'll get jealous and boop, 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 beep, beep. You don't need to talk. I'm going to leave them soon anyway. Four years later, you're still in the shit. Why do y'all be believing that type of stuff? I, I just listen to people. Listen to them. They'll tell them on themselves. If you have a boundary, like, especially somebody, uh, I just, you know, I just... I be telling y'all, y'all gonna make me rip out one of my dreads. I be growing this thing for 13 years. 30, I look, y'all gonna make me see this dread right here. You like this dread? I love this dread. I'm gonna yank this shit out my head the next time somebody tell me they, they fell for that again. This is like, I fell for the old marriage sleeping in the separate bed strip. Yank, dread gone. I'm gonna hang it right here. You know, I'm gonna hang it right here in the background beside this uh beside this comfort zone sign so y'all can see the, the, the lost dread of red flags because y'all ignored that terrible red flag right there. It's so easy to figure that out, y'all. Ask questions. And listen. 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 Listen to people. You know what I mean? If they are trying to move too fast, if they're trying to introduce you to their parents really, really fast, or meet your parents really, really fast, that is a red flag. They're trying to get integrated into your life so it's harder to get them out. A tick doesn't bite you and sit on the surface. When, 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 some, some narcissistic people are like ticks. When last time you saw a tick, sit right here and bite your ass on the arm. I'm from, I'm from North Carolina, so ticks are, are big in the South. 
When the last time you seen a tick bite you and sit on the surface so you can see it and pick it out? They don't. Some narcissistic people are like ticks. They don't sit on the surface. They burrow beneath the surface so it's harder to pick them out. So them them meeting your parents or you meeting their parents really, really quick. Them meeting your kids or you, them, you meeting their kids really, really quick. Y'all buying houses, cars, clothes together, moving in together really, really quick. That's that narcissistic tick burying deeper into your blood, into your body to make it harder to get them out. Makes it harder to get them out. It makes it when you start to realize the lies and the, the manipulation going on. It's too late then. You already pregnant, or you got a baby, or you, or you got a baby on the way by, or y'all already signed a, a two year lease with a stranger. You know, or they moved in with you because they were, or, or they moved in with you and you're taking care of them because they fell on hard times. Come on, y'all. Dread, look, it's gonna look. This is how it's gonna. This is how that damn dread gonna look. Hanging right here on the wall. It's gonna be hanging right there on the wall. It's gonna be your fault. <laughs> it's like that's like some narcissist stuff. Right? Y'all may be ripped by her out. It's your fault. <laughs> but seriously, y'all, please listen and stop ignoring the red flags. If they're trying, I always tell y'all. Y'all know this is one of my sayings right here. I'm like, if they're moving really, really fast, if they're sweeping you off of your feet, is normally to drop you on, to flip you upside down and drop you on your damn head. It just is. You can slow it down, y'all. You have the ability to slow it down. You have the possibility. The poss you have. You can. You just can't because if you allow them to run over top of you at the beginning of the relationship, what do you think they're going to do, do to you in the middle or the end? What do you think is going to happen? You think they're just going to just gallivant off into the sunset or into the darkness with you? No, they're going to run over top of you, use you, abuse you, and then discard you. They're gonna discard you, and you're gonna be mad. You're going to blame them. You're like, it's their fault. They treated me so terribly, but I kept, I kept taking them back. Once you take them back, the narcissist doesn't believe they're doing anything wrong to you. They know they're doing, they, they know they're doing wrong, but they think it's okay. Let me rephrase that. They know that they are doing wrong to you, but they, but they think it's okay. If they lie to you in the beginning, they will lie to you in the end. Like y'all be found finding out lies early on. Like they'll lie to you about their living situation or their work situation or their job or their car situation, whatever. You'll find out two, three weeks into it that they're lying and then you still t you'll forgive them. Oh, it's just a little lie. The little lies perpetuate and lead to bigger things, y'all. Cut it off early. That way you don't let that damn narcissistic tick burrow inside of you, burrow inside of your life anymore. You know what I mean? And Lee, you're adding to the stigma by calling narcissists ticks, you know? You really, you really, really are, bro. You just are. I just like, can you just be nicer to narcissists, you know? Yeah, I'm a narcissist. I was once a narcissistic tick. I'm like a flea now. I jump, I'll jump and bite you. I'll jump on you and bite you and I'll jump off like a flea. Not like, I'm not a tick anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I know I'll be talking crazy because I know this stuff, like, yeah, literally this stuff comes off the top of my head, dude. This is not, I don't plan these episodes. I don't I don't do anything of that of that sort. I literally just get on here and start talking. And I've been driving around all day. I've had I showed some houses today. That's why I got my little sweaty on, my little sweater sweater on, you know what I mean? I'm do you know, do wopped up and stuff, you know. But yeah, y'all little you literally have the power to stop this. You do, you do. You can't like don't give your don't give anybody else your power. Because at the beginning of a relationship, it doesn't seem at the beginning of a relationship with a narcissist, it doesn't seem like a power struggle, but it is. They're taking away your power because they're b blowing past your boundaries that you have set for yourself. I've never done. If you find yourself repeatedly saying this was about somebody, that could be a red flag, y'all. If you keep saying over and over again, I've never done this with anybody before. I've never been. This, I've never moved this fast with anybody before. I've never done this. Blah blah blah. If you keep saying statements like that, those are red flags. Maybe you need to slow down and take a look. Maybe if all of your friends, including your best friend and your parents, all are just saying, "Hey, you, you, y'all moving a little too fast." Maybe they're right. Maybe put your ego to the side a little bit and fucking listen to people sometimes. Maybe you you don't know them. You don't know them. And then you end up in a terrible ass relationship for five years when you just could have listened to your to, to 15, 20 friends in your family. But you know better, right? You know better. You get caught up in this relationship and you blame why didn't y'all tell me? We did. We did tell you. You said we didn't know them. You looked at us directly into our face and said, You don't know them. You got love bomb and you got trauma bonded really, really quickly relationships with narcissists move really really fast you know so you might be in a relationship with a narcissist for three months but it feel like a year it's like a, a reverse dog years you know what i mean like it's not like not reverse dog years narcissistic relationships are like dog years yeah they three the dog like your relationship is a year old but it's actually like you really live seven years something like that because they squeeze so much into that time period you do so much 
you blow past, you're blowing past relationship markers, relationship milestones. Like it took your best friend, uh, of you, two years of dating, two years of engagement, and then they got married a year later. So they they took five whole years. Y'all got y'all did all that in five months. Ain't got a baby on the way. Woohoo! You beat them, didn't you? You beat the hell out of them, didn't you? Then you find out you got a narcissist. Then they discard you while you're pregnant. Then you find out they're getting cheated on while you're pregnant, or why you know you might find out the baby not yours. Like what? Like, y'all slow it down. You don't know these people. Get to know them. It takes at least ninety days to get to know somebody. Y'all shouldn't be talking about no damn kids on the first date. No getting married. Where you your dream wedding date is? You don't need to be doing it on the first damn date, y'all. Don't put that in your Tinder profile, your Bumble profile. Stop giving people the blueprint to manipulate you. Y'all be listening to a whole damn soliloquy of shit that y'all that you that you want from somebody in a relationship. Then you'd be surprised when somebody pretends to give it to you. And then they're not really who they pretended to be. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Slow down, y'all. I know you're like, Lee, this sounds like a victim blaming episode and boop, 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 beep, 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 blah, blah, blah. You know I'm not trying to victim blame. You know I'm here for victim empowerment. It helps you transition from Victor, victim, Victor, from Victor, Victor, Victor Newman. <laughs> if you know who Victor Newman is, <laughs> uh, you trans, you, you, it helps you transfer from victim to survivor to thriver. So when you thrive and you can help other people, thrivers help other people. You can't do that in victim, you can't do that in victimhood. You can't do that. You can do that a little bit of survivor mode, but Vic was thriver mode. You got it, yo, y'all. Anyways, y'all, it's 8.30 p.m. I got to get this video uploaded. My ring light is, I mean, is my house haunted. Y'all see that? It's flashing. I got to get off here, y'all. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. You are a mental healness rock star, and I appreciate you for being here. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the screen to subscribe to the channel and watch another one of my videos in my playlist. There's also a link available up here for you to purchase my kids' book. Remember, it's not your fault on Amazon. So check that out. Thank you. I will see you in the next video. Peace.